You clicked on this video because you want to make money. Well, I'm going to show you how to make the most money possible and exactly how much money you can expect to make per hour with the bunker. This video will cover beginner topics as well as advanced topics for the bunker. So if you don't need to learn about everything, I've left chapters in the description and on your timeline there. So you can skip to the part of the video that you need to learn about. Okay, let's go. What is the bunker? Well, it's one of the passive businesses in GTA Online. So what you will do is either steal or buy supplies for your bunker and the staff in that bunker will slowly turn those supplies into product that you can sell. Or if money making isn't what you're trying to do right now, they can also turn those supplies into research so you can unlock exclusive items. But of course, we'll go more in depth later. So where should you buy a bunker? Well, a lot of people may already have the bunker at the top of the map in Polito Forest. I know a lot of players would have got this for free with a starter pack. And I'm here to tell you right now that unfortunately, Unfortunately, this is by far the worst bunker in the game. The reason for that is because you will need to complete sail missions in Los Santos. So you'll have to drive from the top of the map all the way down to the bottom of the map, maybe multiple times. And sale missions have time limits, so you might not actually be able to sell all of your product in time, and you may just lose hundreds of thousands of dollars. So if you have this bunker, the first thing you should be trying to do is get a better one. The best value for money is on the left side of the map here, the Chumash bunker. It's actually one of the cheaper bunkers, and it's the second closest to Los Santos. The main downside though is there isn't much on the left side of the map there, so if you're ever gonna go there, it's going to be specifically for your bunker. The very best bunker you can buy is the farmhouse bunker. It's in a pretty good location, central on the map. It's the closest one to Los Santos, but unfortunately it is the most expensive. If you don't want to spend that much money, you can see I've got mine here, the Route 68 bunker. Any of the bunkers around this area of the map are pretty good. And the main reason for that is because they're very close to your other businesses that are likely out in Sandy Shores, like your MC businesses. So long story short, you can't really go wrong with a bunker unless you've got the Polito Forest Bunker or the Lago Zancudo Bunker as well. Those two are just too far away. As for your renovations, the only one I would recommend getting is the Personal Quarters. It's pretty cheap and this lets you spawn at your bunker. So in the long run, this will be very, very useful. As for the other upgrades, the bunker style is purely cosmetic. The shooting range definitely isn't a necessary purchase. Same can be said for the gun locker and the transportation is actually very, very slow like it's faster to walk so let's head inside and explain exactly how the bunker works once you head inside you'll see three bars on the bottom right of your screen product research and supplies so like i said at the start of the video once you get supplies for your business the staff inside will either convert those supplies into product or research in order to assign your staff to either manufacturing or research you can do that on the laptop here where it says manage staff so you can assign all of your staff to manufacturing and the research bar won't move at all you can assign them to both or you can assign them to only research of course if you only assign them to manufacturing they'll create product twice as fast and the same goes for research but if you assign them to both both of the bars will fill up at half of the speed because obviously they're doing both at the same time next we'll talk about upgrades this is very important to understand if you don't understand this concept the rest of this guide won't make sense while the staff and equipment upgrades are expensive, you absolutely need to buy these. If you don't buy these, your staff will burn through the supplies 40% faster and they will also be worth 40% less money. So for the rest of the guide, I'll be calculating profits assuming that you have both of these upgrades. Sorry to break the bad news to you, but if you don't have these upgrades, it's actually not worth running this business yet. You're much better off doing other activities like heists and contracts. As for the security upgrade, this is also somewhat important. This is because every so often your business will get raided and you will have to come and protect protect your business. If you don't protect your business, it will shut down, you'll lose all of the product and you'll have to set it up again. If you buy the security upgrade, that will happen much less often. So if you can afford it, I would recommend it, but I would recommend buying the staff and equipment upgrades first. Okay, let's talk about making money and we'll start with resupplying. If you have the staff and equipment upgrades, you should always buy supplies instead of stealing them. The reason for that is if you complete these steal missions solo, 
though, most of the time when you complete this mission, it will only actually fill up your supplies bar one fifth of the way, which means you'd have to do that five times just to fully resupply the business. That could take you up to half an hour and your time is much better spent by just buying the supplies for $75,000 and then going to do other activities in the meantime. Because in those 30 minutes, you could make a lot more money doing things like VIP work, security contracts, payphone hits, heists, missions, anything really. So when it comes to resupplying, always buy supplies. Let's talk about profit. This is what everyone came for. And if we're trying to make profit, we want to assign all of our staff to manufacturing only. It will take two hours and 20 minutes to work through one full bar of supplies. That's 140 minutes. It's going to get a bit complicated, but bear with me. I'll give you the simple answer at the end. Your fully upgraded bunker will make one unit of product every seven minutes. Each unit of product is worth $7,000. That means in 140 minutes, which is how long it takes to work through one supply bar, your bunker will produce $140,000. But wait, that's a lie. There's two more things we need to consider. When you go to your laptop and start the sell mission, if you choose to sell it in Los Santos, you'll actually earn 50% more. So one full bar of supplies will actually generate $210,000 worth of product. But that's also kind of a lie as well, because we're not actually making $210,000. We had to pay $75,000 to get the supplies in the first place. So that means our total profit from one bar of supplies is $135,000. Remember that took us two hours and 20 minutes to get in the first place. So that means the profit per hour is $57,857. Now that might seem not very good. Let's just say that. But considering all of this is happening in the background while you can do whatever you want in GTA Online, it's actually pretty good. You just come back every few hours and reap the rewards. But if you do that, you wanna make sure you do it right. So let's talk about cell missions because that can actually help you make a bit more money here as well. When you're completing your cell mission, you wanna take into account how many people you're doing it with. If you're doing it solo, then you have to do this very carefully. First things first, we should always be selling in Los Santos. We get 50% more money, it's worth it. Always do this. Next thing you should know is if you have a lot of product, it can actually spawn multiple vehicles during the cell mission. This means it can take a very long time. So if you're doing this in a public lobby, that means you have a much higher chance of getting griefed. And even if you're doing this in an invite only lobby, some of these cell missions take a very long time and you might not even complete it before the time expires. So if you're selling solo and you only want one sale vehicle, you have to be selling 25 units or less. How much money is that? That's $262,000 if you're selling it to Los Santos. So if you have less than that, there will always only be one sale vehicle. If you're selling up to 50 crates, there is a chance it could spawn two vehicles. Up to 75, there could be three. And over 75, there could be four. You're probably wondering how much a bunker can actually hold. It can hold 110 units. So if you're selling it in Los Santos, that means you can sell it for $1.14 million, and that will take you 12 hours to get that much stock. There's a handful of different cell missions that you can actually get. My personal favorite is the one with the Phantom Wedge. This one's incredibly easy and incredibly fast. The Monster Truck cell missions are also pretty good, but there's only a 15 minute time limit. So if you have three monster trucks, you might not actually finish selling them all in time. Same thing goes for the Dune FAV cell missions. This can spawn up to four Dune FAVs if you're selling that much stock and you probably won't sell that all in time solo. And then there's two different insurgent cell missions. The good one is the one you can see here where there's only gonna be one, two, or three insurgents to sell. Very simple, just drive to the destination and it's done. But you can also get this other insurgent cell mission where you have to drop off five crates per vehicle. If you get this one, I suggest just finding a new session immediately. You will lose a small amount of product, but this is by far the worst sell mission for the bunker. It takes a very, very long time 
and the AI on the mission bug out a lot as well and you have to chase them for like 10 minutes it's it's really bad let's talk about the high demand bonus so if you are crazy enough to try and sell these in a public session you'll get a 2% bonus payout for every other person that's in the lobby and that caps out at 50% so if there's 25 or more other players in your lobby you can earn an extra 50% on top of what you're already earning for the sell mission but it's a big risk because people will probably try and blow up your cargo so that decision's up to you let's talk about research if you want to do research there are 45 items that you can unlock some of these are only cosmetic they're liveries weapon skins that sort of thing some of them can be somewhat useful like enhancements for certain vehicles and then some of them are actually very good like the five mark two weapon types like you can see on your screen unfortunately you can't choose which one you want to research next you will pick one of the 45 randomly and you'll have to complete that bit of research before you can research something else this essentially works the same way as the manufacturing if you assign your staff to research over time this bar will fill up and once that bar is full you'll unlock the research there is a much faster and expensive way to unlock research items though and that's by fast tracking your research so as soon as that research bar fills up even just a tiny bit you can actually pay money just to finish the rest of the bar. If the bar is basically completely empty, that's gonna cost you $225,000. That will cost you less if the bar is more full. And that's basically all there is to it. The bar will fill up at the same speed as the manufacturing would if you choose to dedicate all of your staff to the research, or you can assign them to both manufacturing and research and they'll do half and half. You can also call Agent 14 while you're out and about in the map and request a research mission that will set you out on a mission that's similar to the steel supplies mission where you go out steal some research and bring it back to the bunker and that will fill up about 20 percent of the bar let's talk about the newest way to make money with the bunker and that's the ammunition deliveries every 48 minutes this truck at the front of your bunker will fill up with weapon parts all you have to do is walk up to this vehicle press right on the d-pad or e on pc i believe and then drive that vehicle to an ammunition. Most of the time, enemies will chase you and try and hunt you down, and once you complete that mission, you'll get $50,000, which is actually pretty good considering they're pretty quick. If the delivery is a long way away though, like you can see here, mine was over six kilometers away, that's a pretty long way to drive this slow vehicle. What you can do instead is actually just blow up the vehicle and then go straight back into your bunker. For whatever reason, this doesn't destroy the supplies and they'll be ready to go again. So I did this, did it again, and I got an ammunition that was a lot closer, only five kilometers away. Finally, let's talk about the mobile operations. In order to start these missions up, you need to own a mobile operations center, which you can buy through Warstock Cash and Carry. This starts at $1.225 million, and it is kind of outdated nowadays, but still, we're gonna cover it. You can choose several upgrades for this thing, like a control center, a weapons workshop, and even a vehicle workshop in the back where you can customize some vehicles, kind of like your own personal LS Customs. If you go to the terminal in your mobile operations center, you can start up the mobile operation missions. There's six missions to complete and each of them takes you through kind of a tutorial mission for some of the armored vehicles in the game. They don't pay you much money. It's gonna be about $20,000 and you need at least two people to complete these missions. But if you like collecting vehicles, this is definitely useful to do because whenever you complete these missions, you'll unlock the trade price for the vehicle that that mission is about. So for example, once you do the oppressor mission, you'll unlock the trade price for the oppressor, which if you wanted to buy it, is actually going to save you about a million dollars. So kind of good. And there you go. Now you know absolutely everything you need to know about the bunker. If you enjoyed this video, if it helped you out, leave a thumbs up, consider subscribing for more stuff like this. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Boys. Find me on the mountaintop Need no calculator